ask, but first I'd like each of you to give a little bit about your background, if you'd like to comment on the movie. Um, and then we'll go back and forth a little bit about um, how this relates to perhaps Northern Pass, and then we'll open it up um, to discussion about it. So, Alex? My tears have dried. Uh, I've paddled that river five times. Uh, and I've worked with the Cree up there. Um, and uh, that's a very, very hard thing for me to watch. Uh, but, uh, <laughs> very hard thing for me to watch. Um, but I am really uh, here tonight to talk about uh, the science and the politics and, and the part that I have delved into down here, uh, and so I, th I, I know that we will come to focus on that eventually, but there, I want to say that there are a lot of other good movies out there. Neil Diamond, who made this movie, made another one called One More River, uh, which I hope that you guys will bring to this community. Uh, I'm leaving in 10 days to go to China for a year, but uh, <laughs> uh, there's another movie uh, called Power that was made about Matthew Kuhnkamm, who was the leader who was featured in this movie, who was in meetings about uh, future developments the day that they close the doors on the, on the Rupert. Uh, and I think that Matthew Kuncom and, and, the, and the chiefs, he's the grand chief uh, of the nine villages to the east side of James Bay. I think that uh, you have a real opportunity to, to meet with the Cree leaders uh, and, and remind them of what they said in the early 90s when, when we dammed the East Main, which is the river that the Rupert was diverted north into. Uh, and, and to perhaps forge an alliance with them. Um, what I'm most nervous about, actually, is that conservation organizations will look at this as an opportunity to, to mitigate and, and preserve land. Uh, and the ca Northern Canada is no longer uh, a, a lung for the earth. It's a cigarette because of uh, insect damage and uh, because, of, uh, um, uh, because of these dams and, and, and uh, because of climate change. Um, and so that, um, uh, in fact, preserving a lot of land up there isn't necessarily uh, going to uh, um, help us with climate change. And so the most important thing that I think that, that we can do, and it was emphasized in the movie, is to uh, hang out our clothes and uh, not, not uh, um, flick the switch uh, and, and try and uh, really focus on what we can do to save energy here in New England. And uh, if we're going to spend $1.1 billion, which is the cost of this, uh, power line, uh, uh, just the power line, not the billions of dollars of electricity that will travel over it. Uh, we could spend that on conservation and efficiency uh, if we actually called on our governor and our regulators who regulate this industry uh, to, to do their job well. Great. Thanks. Thanks. Um, I'm with the Conservation Law Foundation, where we're a, a nonprofit member supported. Environmental group. We work across New England. Um, I direct our, our New Hampshire office, and we work on a variety of issues, uh, from water pollution to air pollution to um, land use and transportation matters, and, and um, have have a strong interest in in, in Hydro Quebec matters, and and of course the Northern Pass project that's that's being proposed uh, right now. Um, out of our, our Vermont office, we're working with um, uh, the Pew Environmental Group uh, and some Canadian organizations looking at a number of the impacts of the, the northern plan in uh, the uh, Quebec province is, is proceeding with, looking at things like what the greenhouse gas uh, impacts will be of continuing to develop hydropower up there, what the um, Impacts will be on um, on, on the Cree. Excuse me. Nutrients and things. Yeah. Uh, um, so looking at some some major issues associated with with development there. Um, and here in New Hampshire, uh, we are taking a very uh, strong interest in the Northern Pass project, and right now um, are asking a number of very uh, significant questions about that project. I think the, the most we can say about that project right now is no one knows enough because not enough information has been put out um, by the, uh, the developers.
Texas Northern Pass LLC. Um, we uh, recently filed for intervention in the permitting, pro the, the first of a few permitting processes in involved in uh, uh, that project. And I, I put a uh, put together a brief handout that's on the table outside with just pick it up when you. Uh, yeah, just some basic facts about the project. It's you know from the northernmost from the Cana Canadian border south. Uh, it's, it's 180 miles of transmission line. Uh, at least 40 miles of that will be new transmission corridor uh, coming in through the North Country. If, um, I, if I can just stop you right there, um, because some of you might not know what the Northern Pass is, and I don't know if you saw the Concord Monitor today. There was a little article in about it because it actually is, in, is going to impact the Concord area as well. <laughs> But um, Tom or Alex, if you can sort of start at the beginning about, because it relates to Hydro-Quebec mm -hmm. and what they're trying to do, so. Yeah, it's basically, th this is a project to import 1,200 megawatts <coughs> worth of, of capacity from Hydro-Quebec, so hydroelectric generated power uh, coming and from maybe, Canada. Excuse me? And a little bit of wind. Yeah, right. <laughs> uh, coming from Canada across the New Hampshire-Canada border, running south. Uh, again, the, the total length of the, the line is, is proposed at 180 miles. It would come down 140 miles to Franklin on a, uh, a, a DC line, and, and the, the fact that it's a DC line is significant, we'll get back to that, uh, direct current line, uh, where it would be in Franklin converted to alternating current and enter the regional grid, um, and then further extension over to Deer, uh, Deerfield, where it truly enters the system. And my understanding that it's not necessarily going to give us electricity as much as potentially selling it to Massachusetts and Connecticut. And so, yeah, what needs to happen is that pur purchase power agreements need to be negotiated, and uh, because of the price of natural gas right now, um, it's been very, very difficult for Public Service of New Hampshire, which is a subsidiary of NU, Northeast Utilities, based in Connecticut, uh, which is planning to merge with NSTAR, and NSTAR and NU are the two co-partners for the Northern Pass Transmission Project. Um, uh, so when you hear that it's not a PSNA project, uh, that's true, and at this point they don't have a, a, um, a purchase power agreement to buy any electricity that's going to pipe uh, over this, this line. Uh, and, uh, you know, Vermont actually last year uh, negotiated to get some power um, on a different line uh, to, that was basically replacement power for power that they already were getting from Hydro-Quebec because they're the, one of, they're the only state that didn't uh, cancel in the, in the early 90s um, uh, <coughs> when the, the big battle was fought with David Brower, who was the head of Sierra Club, and Robert Kennedy Jr. was very involved, and, and uh, Matthew Mukash and Matthew Kunkum, who was in this movie uh, where, the, where the Cree leaders, they paddled in 1990 a boat down to New York City called the Odiac to call attention to, uh, to what was going on with the rivers up there. And so uh, a lot of those leaders have repositioned themselves. Uh, and so the, the geopolitics of this are pretty big. The, uh, the gubernatorial race in Massachusetts saw a Republican candidate uh, calling to reclassify uh, renewable uh, um, to large hydropower as renewable. Um, uh, we've seen the Cree open an embassy in early December uh, in, uh, in Quebec City. Um, they're very sophisticated at this point. Uh, hmm, interesting. So. Okay. Um, just one question, and either one can answer. Um, because if Hydro-Quebec is, is part of making this new pass, is, would it be using the energy that's already being produced by the current <laughs> dams, or are they using that as this potential yeah. project as an excuse to create more dams? We were talking about this. So. Yeah. Uh, I mean, that's, that's when, I, when I say there's a lot of information that we don't know, and, and basically uh, the representation that's being made is that Northern Pass will be importing electricity that's being generated by excess capacity. So, Northern Pass has a, no, has a website, I, and I told Tom this before uh, we started here, that I have a slide in the slideshow that I gave in Franconia and Colebrook uh, called my bullshit slide. Uh, and it's the, pardon me, um, 
uh, the uh, Northern Pass Transmission Project website, if you go there and you read their FAQ, their Frequently Asked Questions section, one of the questions is, you know, are you going to need to build new dams uh, to, to meet the requirements of this line? Uh, and they say, no, we already have enough capacity to do this. But you have to remember that they're also making the same promise about a thousand megawatt line, 200 less megawatts. Uh, that's going to go down uh, Lake Champlain and down the Hudson and be buried under Lake Champlain and, and the Hudson if they get approval uh, and go all the way to New York City. And that there are other projects up around uh, um, in Newfoundland and whatnot that, that are also um, in, in place. And, uh, and so we're looking at uh, um, that. And then you scroll down on the FAQ page and it says that the strategic plan uh, of the province of Quebec uh, which is essentially the strategic plan of uh, Hydro-Quebec um, uh, because it's a crown corporation and, and the premier of Quebec used to have his office in, in Hydro-Quebec, uh, um, is to continue developing our hydroelectric resources. And I would just say that in terms of the wind stuff that you heard a little bit of a peep about in this movie, uh, the Cree are, are and, and, and Jim McKinn, who actually came down to Project Laundry List's 400-foot clothesline in front of Hydro-Quebec headquarters, uh, in 2007, <laughs> uh, they, they've had a real, Jim McKinn's the guy who has that Creek Corporation uh, to, to build wind power and whatnot. They've had a really hard time getting contracts and whatnot, and there's a lot of infighting uh, that's not discussed in this movie about, about that. Uh, and so, yeah, if you look at Northern uh, Hydro Quebec's strategic plan for 2009 to 2013, Objective one with respect to their hydropower is to expand generating capacity, and objective two is to export more and more. And, and so Quebec never meets its, its energy efficiency goals. Uh, they have a lot of electric heat, uh, um, and uh, while the aluminum smelters that, that used to really rely on this along the St. Lawrence Seaway uh, are, are perhaps not as active as they used to be uh, because of the economy, uh, <laughs> Um, there's still a, a huge demand for this power. There, 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 there's an, there's, an, there's another, another piece of that puzzle. Um, uh, all of these dams from the very beginning have always been financed by Wall Street, um, and long-term contracts are the ticket to getting money off of Wall Street. So it's going into it's, hydro. It's going, going into hydro. So okay. that's that's the, you know, that, that's one of the, the major importances for hydro <coughs> of these long-term contracts is it gives them the kind of you know balance sheet stability that investors want to see. More but uh, and it's important to note that there's a project Muskrat Falls, which is over by uh, um, the Churchill Falls, which is was the until Three Gorges, which Hydro Quebec actually helped build in China, um, uh, was the largest reservoir I think in the world, uh, the Churchill Reservoir, uh, Smallwood, small uh, um, for the Churchill uh, Falls, which you used to be able to hear from five miles and uh, um, uh, feel from two miles and see from a mile away. Uh, and, and they want to build another huge, huge, huge project over there. And actually, all the provincial maritime provinces are fighting with each other over uh, um, who's going to get the energy rights and is Hydro Quebec going to just buy us out and all that. And what are we going to do to get this into Maine and all that? So that's going on too at the same time here. Uh, wow, complicated. So it's complicated. Yeah. Shall we open it up? Sure. Yeah. Questions? Yes, go ahead. Um, isn't one of the real problems, I mean, we talk. And it doesn't matter what the issue is. We're talking now about hydropower. We could be talking about industrial wind. We could be talking about gas fracking. But all of those issues are, have one um, connection and one commonality between them. And that is that even though we live in a country where, where our constitution say we have a local self-governing authority within our municipalities, when it comes to decisions like we're made here, um, corporations have kind of a leg up on us. They have the, um, the rights, all of the protections under the Constitution that allow them to carry on business, that protect them from liability, and so forth, that allow them um, freedom to move through things like the Contracts Clause and the Commerce Clause, which secure their contracts so that you cannot interfere with it once it's signed. It seems to me that all this is symptoms of the disease, which is that we don't actually govern here. And so if we were to draft local ordinances to discover what we want to protect and protect it standing on that original fundamental law, we would avoid these problems of having another foreign company come into our place, use us as a sacrifice zone,
for their profits. I, Tom, 